From legendary locals we all know to people you should get to know. Follow Ipswich Today on your favourite app and never miss an episode. Or go to ipswichtoday.com.au Coming up, Sudan has declared a third tilt at Division 4 in the by-election set for October 26, but her true independence is under scrutiny. Also in this episode, 50 cent public transport fares are here to stay, but how sustainable is it and how long can it last? UniSQ consumer expert Park Tai Chon has some answers and the savings for Ipswich commuters. It's Monday, September 23, 2024, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. In 2020, Rosewood resident Susan Dunn put her hand up to run for council, but was unsuccessful. Susan again ran in March 2024 and missed out, and now with a decision made for a by-election to fill the vacancy in Division 4 on October 26, she has decided to have a third go. Thanks for speaking with Ipswich today, Sue. That's fine, Alan, and uh, greetings to all the listeners. Before we get to talk about the by-election, let's just recap a little. Back in March, when you ran for Div 4, how disappointed were you? at running fourth in a field of four? Um, oh, it was, yeah, it was disappointing. But in a lot of ways, I was quite encouraged because the um, the vote was quite high and it was, in a way, it was fairly close. I wasn't a distant fourth, which was encouraging. But, yeah, no doubt. in a field of four is a bit sad. Well, no <laughs> doubt that's given you a little momentum to have a third go. So why are you standing again? Running again, uh, it's... Same, uh, pretty much the same reasons, but this time it's more of a focus on I really want to be the local representative because I think it's important to have uh, some local representation in, in Division 4. You've maintained a steady presence on Facebook all year and since you came out last week and to say that you're definitely going to nominate and run, there's been some comments from people that have been far from complimentary, what do you say to those vehemently against you running and directly questioning your independence? I mean, I can only say so many times that I am independent and it's difficult to convince someone who doesn't know you personally that of your independence. You can only just say it and you know, expect to be believed. Um, but yet that's all I can do is just uh, just keep saying it and 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 make sure it bears out in my actions as well. I guess I could put it another way. You are a member of the ALP. Do you think this will help or hinder your chance of winning? Difficult to say about help. Um, In some people's eyes, it might hinder because sometimes people can only see the party membership and and think, oh, yeah, great, more party politics in, in council which we, you know, we really don't need that. And it's not necessary because no, none of the parties, none of the major parties have a, a party platform for local government. So it's kind of, it doesn't mean anything really. Um, I, I guess people then know where I stand with my values. So my, um, which you know, I had long before I joined the party, but those values lined up with the party and that's, that's why I joined. But my values of standing up for um, people who don't really have a voice, uh, looking after marginalised people. Um, so they're, they're my values and, and that's why I'm in the party. So whether that is a help or a hindrance, I guess it's up to individual voters. Before committing to run at the uh, by-election, you said Division 4 needs to set a high bar. And I'll just quote you briefly from what you put on Facebook. When I watch council committee and ordinary meetings, I'm alarmed. I'm alarmed at the opposing for opposition's sake. I'm alarmed at comments and behaviour, which seems to have the priority of wedging other councillors over the interests of residents. What do you think is going on here? <laughs> Yeah, well, the, the wedging of other councillors, it seems to be more positioning and manoeuvring rather than keeping the issues of the residents and keeping the residents in mind. So they're thinking about themselves rather than thinking about the people, but rather than putting the people first. Now, if you're successful, you'll have to work around the table with these same people. How would you go about changing what you've been witnessing from outside council? 
I think I know communication was a theme at uh, one of the last meetings and the, the lack of it. That's probably going to be the, the best first step to to getting a, a better better relationship. So councillors need to discuss issues more rather than themselves or or worried about who's voting which way or um, you know who said what and and who's cutting someone off or. Um, that kind of behaviour. We really need to focus on issues and, and talk about issues. Given the current perceptions of the uh, the last few meetings and the, and the ruckus we see on YouTube or people have been going in and witnessing in person uh, in the public gallery, how do you get on with Teresa Harding? Oh, I get on well with Teresa. I um, had a nice chat with her at the uh, Marburg, uh, the Black Snake Creek Art Show Awards on Friday night. Um, yeah, I get on well with her. Um, I mean, we're obviously different politically, but um, for the when we talk about the issues and we talk about the people of Ipswich, um, we're we've got the same um, same goals. We want the best for the people of Ipswich. If you are successful, what are your top priorities for Division Four and across the city more broadly? Well, it's the same one that people have been talking about for quite a while, and that's roads. Everyone is, yeah. You know, not very happy about the state of a lot of the roads, um, and that's that's all in all areas. We see you out and about uh, via your Facebook page in the community. What are people coming up to you one on one talking about in terms of those issues, apart from the roads? Apart from roads, um, the behaviour of council actually, yeah, which is surprising, <laughs> but um, yeah, and I, I think wondering which way I'll go, and I just have to reiterate over and over that. It depends on the issue. I'm not going to. I'm not picking a side because I think that's. It's only going to make it worse. Actually, that's interesting. You should say that people have been talking to you about uh, the ruckus. Do you think there is a broad awareness, or are you just getting people you know tell you that, or are the complete strangers telling you that? Uh, was well, people who know me, and if they uh, they're up with the uh, the way council works and and council issues, so they can speak more um, directly on, on different things. But people in general, because it's it's in the news and it's lots of people are talking about it, the general feeling from people who aren't all that engaged with um, you know, council meetings is they should just stop the bickering and work for Ipswich. Susan Dunn, we'll chat at least one more time before Election Day on October 26. Thanks for taking time out today to speak with Ipswich today. My pleasure, Alan. At this early stage of the by-election campaign, there's three known contenders, David Martin, Russell Milligan and Sue Dunn. Nominations open with ECQ Friday, September 27. I spoke with Russell Milligan in a recent episode and have also extended an open invitation for David Martin to join the show. If you use public transport, you'll no doubt be pocketing the savings, and now 50 cent fares are here to stay. A month out from the Queensland election, both major parties have promised to maintain the current 50 cent fares for public transport. This bipartisan promise uh, comes from the Queensland Government's hugely successful 50 cent trial, which only began in August. To take a closer look at the 50 cent fare decision, I'm joined by University of Southern Queensland consumer behaviour expert, Associate Professor of Marketing, Park Tai Chon. Thanks for joining Ipswich today, Park. Thank you, and it's good to be here. When the 50 cent fare trial was announced, I found it a bit hard to believe at first. Was there a catch? What was your reaction? Well, when it first announced, I, I felt like those people who actually have access to it will be a good news for them because obviously they can reduce the cost. Like I live on the Gold Coast, should I want to go to Ipswich or um, city, Brisbane city, it would cost me like $30 plus, you know, round trip. But now it would be like $1 because 50 cent each, uh, you know, each trip. Uh, so that is that is a lot of saving for me. But then some other people, you know, concern like, okay, where are they going to get the money from and, and all sorts of things. Well, it's obviously not a hoax. It is real. What do you think the government's reason was for lowering fares? The, the, the six months announcement earlier, uh, 
obviously is to to make people happy with them. Now, apart from this 50 cent um, <laughs> initiative, you know, um, there were many other things as well, like, you know, reduce the uh, electricity bills or, you know, re- uh, do some repair and a few other things. And then there were a few things about solar panels and, and all sorts of things that mm. uh, people get benefit off and obviously now the other party also saying that they will do the 50 cent as well because a lot of people are happy especially those who are using it and and if you ask the reason why obviously they want to go back to the office again there's been a lot of talk about getting public transport use back to pre-covid levels has that been achieved I would say in some area, yes. Um, not much in Ipswich, probably, but say in some main part of Brisbane where there are lots of buses and the main route of the, uh, what is it called, the G-Link uh, in Gold Coast. Mm. So a lot of tourists and the local residents actually have been using it a lot nowadays. And um, since the 50 cent, I think there have been more people who try to use it, but these more people is just people who can walk to the location and is not uh, reduced of the two months of to- too much of that convenient because public transport. The good thing is now is cheap, but then it's come with the re- less flexibility because you might have to drive to you might have to walk to those location and then take public transport, which you cannot control the time. If you drive, you can control the time, but you can predict what time cable would be. Is it fair and equitable? Equitable because the longer the commute the more you save, so people close to the city aren't going to save as much. And are there any areas in the state missing out? That is a very good question. Now, um, talking about a fair goal, so 50 cents wherever you go, except one stop, which is that um, Brisbane Airport stop. If you stop there, you have to pay a bit extra, but Mm. the rest is 50 cents. Well, to me, I think it's fair. I mean... um, like Perth and other cities, is might be even be free, but 50 cent is, is I think, is okay. And uh, I think for younger people, they might open opportunity for them to do like a, a weekend trip. Like, you know, they can now go to Cocos for $1 round trip. Yes, exactly. It used to be much more expensive. So, so kids could technically go there and then just look at a few things and then come home. So uh, so I think it's actually good. And it's good for our tourists as well because a lot of tourists use those public transport uh, if they don't rent a car. So I think it, it's good, good for those people. It's obviously going to cost the state budget millions of dollars a year to subsidise these 50 cent fares when they were already subsidised at the previous levels. Has there been an estimate to the impact on the state budget, do you know? Well, look, uh, the last, uh, the six months of the trial, uh, the cost estimate was $150 million and they got the money from the Queensland Coal Loyalty for the previous the six months trial. If we were to keep going, it would be $150 million at least for that six months periods as they estimate earlier where the budget is going to come from i'm not sure to be honest because the government have a certain budget and it's not changed much but obviously if they have to spend extra money on this specific uh, important element here where are they going to reduce the budget because like when we go to Coles and Woolies and Audi we have our certain budget to buy food grocery but then You know, if you're going to spend extra on here, we have to reduce on something. My concern is what they're going to reduce and how much it's going to impact, especially those people who not use this public transport. That's certainly been a big question being asked by a lot of people. Is it sustainable in the long term? It reminds me a little bit of the $1 a litre for milk. It was going to be forever, but obviously it it couldn't last. And at some point in the future, the 50 cent fares won't last either. We have to be real about that, do you think? You just actually just remind me about that one dollars or two dollars milk. <laughs> I, I felt like when they stopped doing it, I, I took it for granted. To be honest, when the milk was so cheap, and then and then when it's no longer cheap, I feel like you know something was not right. So <laughs> so yes, if, if this public transport not lasts forever, some people. You, you see, uh, our research also shown that after people do, repeating doing things for about eight to seventeen times, it's become their. Uh, habit so they get used to it so if they take public transport all the time and then say after two or three years it's no longer cheap i think it will be like a moment of truth they have to get extra budget for 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 the expenses by then let's talk about ipswich specifically has there been increased usage in the western corridor definitely definitely and the government also see this as well now i did a quick check check sorry, check earlier, and I noticed in June, the government have mentioned that they're going to spend about $70 million uh, update 
um, on some of the buses uh, in Ipswich and other locations like Logan as well. Like for in Ipswich, like they're going to be doing the improved connectivity to the rail station near the Ipswich Hospital or extended the extension routes of buses, especially like Springfield, those area. Red Bank plans and, and many other parts that they're going to introduce new services there. So so I think um, it's actually good for Ipswich because some, to be honest, some of the state might not have this new investment. But then since we are now have that 50 cent and seeing this uh, a few millions dollars here are going to be throwing to improve public transport, I think people tend to be happy. And uh, from Ipswich to go to Brisbane City is also quite convenient. I mean, convenient as in it might take an hour, but but it still take like through the train. Might uh, be one I, I've hour, taken least, I've taken yeah. two and a half hours when the traffic's really bad, so that that, that makes the train quick. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So so what I really hope to see is that uh, we want to see more public transport uh, option available for the for for customer and also more frequency as well. And probably what we might want to see is like a right. A park and ride facility, something like what we see in the Springfield uh, available in other locations would be good, like a very big car park for people to park their car and then just use public transport. Some cities do this better than Brisbane and Ipswich, and that is coordinating the buses to train stations rather than duplicating the routes. I think Perth does that uh, very well. Yes. Do you think there's room for improvement? Oh, definitely lots of room for improvement. Perth, uh, Melbourne, Sydney, they all have this like city circle uh, and lots of connectivity and all that there. Uh, obviously, I'm not a city planner, but I'm sure that there are a few things that they could do, especially if Switch is now growing. Um, you know, in the next 10 years, we will see lots of new houses, housing development, and then, you know, uh, other areas that people can spend their time and then health and, and other things there. So definitely there will be a lot of uh, connectivity is coming up. Having said that, government actually know about the lack of public transport, which they are trying to improve. Uh, it is in the plan. I really want to see it happen. Have you been able to calculate a dollar amount or what the average Ipswich commuter will save? If you were to go to Brisbane, you probably save about $28 per day because the trip is about $30 because you actually pay for the, the most expensive one. In terms of the long term, now um, a lot of the people say if you, you go to schools and then go to work by buses, so it would probably be, say, at least $10 to $15 a week. And if that, you know, reduced to $0.50, cent, so probably you will save – I put it this way, I'm not sure how much it's going to save you, but if you use it every day, probably it costs you just about $400 a year, which you save a lot of money. What do you think people will do with that money? Will they save it for something bigger or do you think they'll spend it? Well, <laughs> I, I think if you ask me, I would say grocery is much more expensive than two years ago or last year. If where are they going to save? I'm not sure if they can save, to be honest. Because the money he are going to spend on their other living expenses, but at least it's, it's some type of help, which is good. Well, I think we can all enjoy the 50 cent fares while they last, Park. So thanks again for uh, speaking with Ipswich today. Thank you. That was Park Tai Chon, Associate Professor of Marketing at the University of Southern Queensland. And that is it for this episode. A reminder, you will find handy links in the show notes. Ipswich Today is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is listener-supported. Please make a once-only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au. Follow and stream this podcast from your favourite app, including iHeartRadio, or play Ipswich Today on smart speakers. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thank you for listening. Enjoying Ipswich today? Please share the love on your socials.